Hi guys, welcome to Lecture and Ladies. This is episode four of season three. We are going through kick-ass women of history. And this week I'm going to talk about Chiyome Mochizuki, who was the first female ninja. Yeah. So she was born in either the 1530s or 40s. We don't really know exactly when she was born, um, but we do know that she was a noblewoman and the first Konoichi, which is a female ninja. And her life is kind of shrouded in mystery. Precise dates of her birth and her death are very muddy, if not, like, her death we know nothing about. Um, and even the pronunciation of her name are different. She also goes by uh, Chiyojo, as well as Chiyome. And there are, you know, not, not too many solid details which makes sense because there's not a lot of famous ninjas in history. And um, it <laughs> reminds me of, uh, there's a quote from Sir Davos in Game of Thrones that says, if you're a famous smuggler, you're not doing it right. So, you know, right. if you're a famous ninja, you're probably not a good one or you are the best because there's very few famous ninjas. She is the first female ninja and the most famous male ninja, arguably, is Hanzo Hattori. Um, if you know anything about feudal Japan, you've definitely heard his name. Other than that, there's, like, a couple other ninjas that we know of, but really, that's about it. So, Honestly, I love the mystery, so. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, Chiyome was likely the descendant of Mochizuki Izono Nomo, so, sorry, no kami, a famous ninja from the Koga period, um, and her husband was Moritoki Mochizuki, and he was also a distant relative of that famous ninja, like distant, like family tree. So nothing, nothing too um, incestuous, I guess. <laughs> uh, and her husband Moritoki was also a samurai, and he was actually the lord of the Saku district which is where they lived. So in in time, it, this is all taking place in feudal Japan, which is, uh, or specifically the Sengoku period, which is a period in Japanese history that is like, it's constant civil war. There's social upheaval. There's political things going on. Think of in, in the, it happens from 1467 to 1615. So like 150 years, just about. So it's oh, not like one little three year blip. It's a, an entire, you know, generations go through this. Think Game of Thrones, but Japanese and real. So her husband is killed in battle in the fourth battle of Kawanakajima in 1561. And she's left bereft and from all accounts, bloodthirsty for vengeance. And she wants to put an end to everything. Love the that war, energy. The battle. Love that energy. Yes. You took my man. I got nothing left to lose. Let's kill mm -hmm. you all. <laughs> Pretty much. So at this Ride point. Ride or die. Literally. She, yes. Very much so. And she chose to ride. <laughs> so at this point, Chiyome began service under the famous daimyo um, Shingen Takeda. And he, a daimyo is like one of the great feudal lords who, it's like, like they're the main players kind of in feudal Japan. And Shingen specifically was, she was left as his charge because she was his, her husband's uncle. And, you know, a woman can't be living alone. She needs a man to be in charge of things. So she is basically shipped off to him for, for him to take care of. Because, That's probably why you know, my life's such a mess. I need to go find an uncle <laughs> somewhere. You need a feudal lord to take you under his wing. That's all. Yeah. So Shingen, at this point, is one of the most powerful lords in Japan. And he has already survived several assassination attempts. And he is basically trying to figure out how he can outsmart his enemies. He is looking for a way to get more information and to be able to stay ahead of them, specifically like the Oda clan 
Iyasu, uh, we'll get to them later. But so he's he needs ways to outsmart these guys. <clears throat> so he orders Chiyome to put together a squad of female spies, and she creates this force. It eventually gets up to 300 women um, is the total, like the highest total that we believe it was at one time. I say we like I was involved in this at all. <laughs> um, and they well, acted as... <laughs> so they it's she basically created a spy force for the Takeda clan and the they are known as the Kunoichi which is a female ninja there's the first clan of all female ninjas ever she is, was thought to be the best candidate to recruit the women because she came from a long line of the Koga ninjas like I said she was also a relative of that famous ninja that her husband was related to and she accepted the task and she set up operations in the village of Nezu um, and got to work. She, it's like, it was set up as a legitimate, like school kind of like a, like a religious school, but it was a, it was basically a front. They did teach all that other stuff, but so she gathers Girls who are orphaned or abandoned because of the war. She goes around Japan. You know, there's upheaval everywhere. She goes into a village that's been burned out and finds survivors. And <clears throat> she goes and, you know, gets women like that... It sounds like a CW show. Like, just it, some random ninja going into yeah. a burned out village and making you a ninja. That would be so cool. I wish I could be a ninja. Like, she would just find <laughs> me. Sign me up. Yeah. Fuck it. Like, poor little Ashlyn, like, wandering the roads of Alabama. (laughs) (laughs) She's just like, come here, little girl, be a ninja. (laughs) Just get him in her van. Um, (laughs) So she goes around, she gathers these girls and women of all ages, all walks of, well, not all walks of life. She tends to get women who are more of, quote unquote, ill repute. So... You know, the women who don't have families or don't have a chance for a good education. Otherwise, like that kind of stuff. So she begins to train them in collecting information, seducing men. um, And they pose all throughout Japan. They are taught how to get information out of people and pass on communications, even administer poisons to specific targets. And they were trained to behave as priestesses, prostitutes, maids, and entertainers all throughout the country. This allowed the female ninjas to infiltrate different locations without coming under suspicion because patriarchal patriarchal society, they're underestimating them, essentially. You know, these feudal lords are like, we don't know what's happening, how our information is getting out. But they don't even think look. It's, yeah, they don't yeah. think to look there. And this goes undiscovered Love for that. decades. Like, decades. <laughs> no one ever thinks, maybe it's that prostitute that so-and-so has been hanging out with. Oh, so, yeah. So they learn to act and apply disguises, um, It was, which is another aspect of the training. They... While they are ninjas, they definitely went through all the physical training and everything. They also hid in plain sight. So they weren't always dressed in, like, a black robe and garb all the time. Like, when you picture a male ninja, that's you picture, like, Splinter, like, got, or the Foot Clan, you know. But that's, they were hiding in plain sight a lot of the time. I mean, and they, really sexy prostitute get up. I mean, it could be, depending on the Halloween company. But yeah, no, that's what they would. That's true. They looked the part. And they were also, like I said, it was a legitimate school. Also, they were taught the ways of the Miko, which is a Shinto shrine maiden or a wandering priestess. So she they say, oh, I'm just, you know, a priestess wandering all around the country doing my job. And that's how they flew under the radar. Um, They did receive legitimate religious education. You know, all that, it was a legitimate school um, with other goals, I guess. (laughs) It's like, well, so 
many of the villagers and locals believe that Chiyome was helping these women and giving them a chance to begin a new life. And little did they know that the recruits were being taught all the skills to be information gatherers, seductresses, messengers, and assassins. Which is a hell of a resume. <laughs> but that's kind of the point. Like, she doesn't want you to know what she's teaching them. Mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah. And... I'm guessing there was no, like, school board to have to report to, you know? Like, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of oversight. Just like, oh, yeah, it's that priestess that runs that school out of, you know... Well... So... In 1573... Chiyome disappears from the historical records. At this point, Takeda Shingen has died, but we don't really know how. So Shingen was the only daimyo with the necessary power and tactical skill to stop Nobunaga Oda, which the Oda clan is like the most powerful clan at this point. Nobunaga specifically is known as the first unifier of Japan. He's got most of the country under his rule. And he forms an alliance with Iyasu Tokugawa, who is another powerful daimyo. And they are basically unstoppable until they get to Shingen and the Takeda clan. So Shingen engages the forces, the combined army in 1572. They capture Futamata. And in January, the Battle of Mikitagahara, where he defeats the army, which is unprecedented but it's a slim win so after defeating tokugawa shingen stops his advance and kind of to collect himself you know like they just barely won a major battle and they're they're laying low for a little bit so this allows tokugawa to prepare for battle again and they do go on and unite japan um eventually but by mid-1573, he, Shingen, enters the Mikawa province and besieges Noda Castle. But while that's happening, he dies in camp. And no one knows how that happens or why. Uh, some accounts say that he succumbed to an old war wound. Some say that a sniper, like an archer, wounded him earlier. Some accounts say that he died of pneumonia. Some say he had a terminal illness, but it's all foggy. And there are actually some historians that believe that Chiyome might have had a falling out with him prior to his death. And that she was the one that actually was responsible for him. Well, him dying. <laughs> she, yeah. Considering the mystery surrounding his demise, it's possible that she poisoned or shot him herself. Because of Chiyome, by the end of his life, Takeda had become the most powerful samurai clan. The Takeda had become the most powerful samurai clan in eastern Japan. Like I said, they beat the Oda clan, or held them off at least. And it was, he never would have got that far without her or her uh, Kunoichi. And after his death... I said he didn't give her credit, and she was like, I'm sick of doing all your work, and you taking all the credit... Very I'm gonna kill possible. your ass. I'm gonna kill you, and I'm gonna disappear. <laughs> yep. She probably well, didn't even disappear. She probably just put on a disguise and came back into town. Nobody even knew. And that's like after his death, the Kunoichi. We don't really know if they disband per se, but no yeah. records further are kept of them. They go back into the shadows. She disappears. It's you know, like it's, it's possible she did it, and then found a new life, took on a new name, maybe got a new husband after you know she found her vengeance. She helped the Takeda clan become one of the largest forces in feudal Japan. Like, she pretty much did what she set out to do. And she actually is kind of become, like, a legendary figure. She's featured in a ton of video games. She's in the Samurai Warriors and the Assassin's Creed games. Like, she's in a bunch of, like, books and all that stuff. Like, she's... The first female ninja. And badass. Yeah, Yeah. that's really cool. I want to be a ninja. I also love, though, that she did disappear. Yeah, like, she was just like, okay, I've done this. Now I'm good. I'm gonna go. Like, you can't be the first female ninja to, like, 
die on the toilet like Elvis <laughs> did. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just like, we have no idea what fucking happened to her. Love that, actually. I love yeah. all the mystery. Mm-hmm. I might have to do that like, my own life. Like, when I feel like it's the end, just wander off into the woods. And it would like, just wander off, yeah. Um, I feel like, especially being a ninja, you have to be extra mysterious, so. Mm-hmm. It's like a requirement yeah. or something. Or I feel like it's... When was she born? We don't know. Yeah. You know? Which is so weird for a noble woman. When did she die? Like, we don't know. Like, I wonder we if she know. even had some of the records destroyed herself. Probably. I mean, I don't know how much the noble women even were still considered a sub level. So there might not have been as there's not going to be as much record as there would have been for her husband or, you know, Shingen Takeda. Right. But still, there would have been something. And they're like, we don't even know. So very interesting, very cool. Love the mystery. Samurai Warrior games are very fun. I played them growing up, um, if anyone is into that kind of stuff. And she's a badass. And, yeah, don't fuck with the Kunoichi. Next week is the last... Yeah. (laughs) It should be a pretty simple instruction, but... (laughs) A lot of people didn't take it for decades. But, um... So next week's gonna be my last episode for this season i have no idea who i'm gonna do so it's more mystery but in the meantime i hope you guys have a good week and we will see you next friday see ya